what's up guys and dolls? I'm Dia, your host of Entertainment with Dia, the show that teaches you the fine art of cooking and entertaining at home for your friends and loved ones. And in today's episode, in case you hadn't noticed, love is in the air and we're going to celebrate Valentine's Day. <laughs> Side because you don't size because you don't want anything crowded in your pan. Um, just drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there first, just to get it warmed up and heated. And after it's heated, you guys know I love to share tips with you. Well, here's another one of my tips that you're gonna love. What I do is I take an ice cube tray and I add fresh herbs in this. Um, I told you last time I mentioned that I cook with a lot of fresh herbs, and this is a little bit of a time saver. So I take my fresh herbs, I cut those up, and then I fill an ice cube tray with either white wine, red wine, or olive oil. So whatever it is that you think you're going to be using, or if you want to do a combination of all of those, you can uh, definitely do that. Um, these are already pre-measured, so they fit each about two and a half tablespoons of liquid um, per little individual holder here. So then that way, once your recipe calls for X amount of cooking liquid, either chicken broth, white wine, olive oil, it's already measured, just pop it out and it's good to go. Really, really simple, easy time saver. So we're going to add that in there once it's warm enough and then after that we're going to follow it with our uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice and lemon zest. I have everything right in here. I'm making my mouth water just talking about this right now. And then after that we're going to add in our seasonings. So we have, I'm using kosher salt. Kosher salt is big and it's flaky and it's gonna stick to all of our um, shrimp that we're gonna get in there. It's gonna be just delightful, I promise you. And then the last thing we're gonna do is add in the shrimp. Um, the shrimp, just make sure, my only tip, just make sure you don't overcook these. It's overcooked when it closes up and it looks like an O. So if it looks like a C, it's cooked. If it looks like an O, it's overcooked and it's going to be rubbery, so make sure you don't overcook those shrimp. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our quick tip that I told you about. We're going to take some white wine and add some white wine in this also. And after the white wine, I'm just going to add a little bit of my fresh squeezed lemon juice. It has some uh, lemon zest already in there. And next, we're just going to start adding our shrimp in. Go ahead and spring for the jumbo or the large shrimp that you can find or even prawns. Um, if you get the tiny ones, you definitely can if you're trying to save money, but I think you'll find that when you have um, the larger shrimp, you'll be a lot more satisfied with the meal and the end results. And again, let this go two minutes per side, flip that over, and another two minutes kosher salt that I mentioned. Go ahead and add that at that time as well. Again, I just want to stress I used olive oil, fresh lemon juice, lemon zest, fresh herbs, a little bit of white wine, and our salt and pepper. So this is what you get. The end result, again, you can add things like butter and also heavy cream to give it a little bit more body and uh, texture and make it creamier if that's something that you're wanting. But if not, that sauce in there is going to be good to go. It's full of flavor. Your shrimp are prepared. And that's all that you'll need. And we're going to take this off um, and put that on our bed of fresh pasta. Again, I'm using whole grain linguine. Okay, and next we're just going to go ahead and plate this. Um, it's really simple. It doesn't take long at all. Again, it was just a couple of minutes per side for the shrimp. The sauce pretty much cooks itself, so that was easy as well. And then you 
just spoon this over the top. Um, now I like my sauce like this. It's fresh, it's lemony, it's bright. But again, if you want something with a little bit more body to it, you can definitely add cream. It's gonna make it really creamy if you use heavy cream. And also butter. I'm gonna add some herbs on top of that. And then we are good to go. Looks like my pan's hot enough. I'm gonna add in my asparagus. After you have your asparagus in, then you're gonna add your grape tomatoes. I'm using grape tomatoes because they pack a lot of flavor to be so tiny. And I really like them in this dish. So we're gonna pack, put those grape tomatoes in, just move them around a little bit. And I'm gonna season it liberally. Again, I'm using kosher salt. It's what I use most of the time. And then after we have that there, we're just gonna let it go for about four or five minutes. You'll know when it's time to remove it from the heat because not only will you hear the sizzling, but then the little tomatoes will start to look even brighter. Um, your asparagus will still be a bright green color, which is good, that's what you want. It's not bright green, it's usually overcooked. So um, I like to keep mine fresh and crunchy and full of flavor and filled with all the vitamins that you need. So for the quick and easy bacon balsamic vinegar vinaigrette, while that's cooking, I went ahead and put some, before I started actually, I put some bacon in the oven. I let that go low and slow for about 12 minutes until it was good and crispy. And I rendered the bacon fat from there. I saved the bacon. I added the bacon fat in here and about one, um, almost a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. And then also um, two teaspoons of brown sugar. See how it's still bright? The tomatoes are really pretty and beautiful and look all shiny and good, and they're good to go. I'm just gonna slide the goat cheese off in here. And this is warm, so the goat cheese is really creamy. It's a soft cheese, obviously, so it's gonna start to melt a little bit, and that's what we want. warm bacon and balsamic vinegar and brown sugar don't forget and just drizzle that over it it's really bright colorful and it's gonna be all you need to finish off this delicious meal and don't forget save room for dessert and we're gonna finish up with our easy ice box pie. Um, again, just to remind you, I think I mentioned earlier, this is the finished product. Take sandwich cookies, and for the bottom here, for your crust, whichever sandwich cookie you're using, I used a chocolate cream filled sandwich cookie, and I dumped it in Irish cream for about a second, no longer than a couple of seconds, because if you leave it in there too long, it's gonna to start to get really mushy, and then you won't be able to pick it up and handle it. So, can't stress that enough. Line the bottom of your pan, or your, your pie plate, whichever dish you'll be using with those uh, cookies. And then after you do that, we're just going to add in our whipped cream. Use one whole container. and softened cream cheese. And then we're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. And beat that until all of it is blended well. But also add at this moment when it's starting to cream up together, you can add um, a little bit of coffee if you'd like to at this point. You can also add a little bit of the Irish cream if you have some reserved. Add that in here as well. Um, other toppings that I've used before or additions that I've used before in this would be uh, caramel and a little bit of sea salt. So that kosher
kosher salt that we use for the other meal is going to come in handy again for this one if you want to make it into like a caramel sea salt. So this is mixed well. I'm going to let you see what it looks like. So if you see how creamy this is now, this is just our whipped cream and our cream cheese. You're going to put that on top, layer that on top of the sandwich cookies that I told you about. Um, and then finish it off with crumpled up or with crushed cookies uh, with a drizzle of chocolate. This goes back in the freezer for about three hours because you want it to be good and firm so that when you slice into it you can make really nice cuts. But if all else fails and your slices don't come out right, don't worry. You can always spoon this up, put it in a ramekin, and tell them this is how you made it. So I hope you'll find that this dessert, just like the other menu items, were really simple and easy to prepare, but they look good on your plate and they'll be sure to impress your guests. So if you get a moment, please subscribe to my link if you like these recipes and you want to know more. I'll be coming back with other recipes throughout the year. So go ahead and drop a comment below if you have made this recipe or if you plan on making it or if you have any suggestions. We'd love to hear from you. Tune in on the next episode and we're going to bring you Cooking in the Kitchen with Kids. I'm going to have two very special guest co-hosts, my nieces, two of my nieces, and they're going to help us cook some delightful meals up with Kids in the Kitchen. So stay tuned. Thanks.